Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in the first half of October. I'm filming this on October 14th so these are all the books that I read from October 1st to the 14th so let's get started. So the first book that I ended up reading in October is Falling Embers by Katherine Cowles. This is the second book in her Tattered and Torn series. Now you'll see throughout the video I read a few of these books in the series this month um, and that is because we have this book right here Shattered Sea as Brie and I's book club pick that I'm literally going to be having tonight our live show for that while I'm filming tonight so it is already out for y'all to watch I believe yesterday for y'all was the day that this uh, live show came out so you can go back and watch the live show that Brie and I put together for our chronically courageous book club um, so this is the fourth book in the series so I had to read the other ones in the series I really wanted to. And so book two is about Calder and Hadley. Calder has been very prevalent in Hadley's life for a very long time because Calder is her brother's best friend. And so she's been in love with him honestly for years ever since she was in high school. And they've always been very close friends but things have happened in both of their lives to cause their relationship to be strained and for them not to be as close anymore. Calder is a single father of twin girls and he is very 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 protective of them. They were in a car accident with their birth mother, biological mother, a couple years ago and ever since then he's been very protective around uh about the people that he loves and Hadley loves to do kind of like a daredevil stunts. She loves to go on BMX bikes, loves to skateboard, kind of get into a little bit not the safest situations and so he's having a really hard time having this relationship with Hadley when all he wants to do is keep her safe because he does not want her to get hurt. He's also scared that if something does happen to her that he's gonna lose her. And so he doesn't wanna make himself feel those feelings for Hadley because he doesn't wanna lose her one day. But then something happens to where Calder's like, you know what, I'm biting the bullet. I'm finally admitting my feelings for this woman and making her mine. So that's just a little bit of their story. Uh, there's definitely more to it and I really enjoy this one. I'm actually going to be doing a series breakdown for um, the series as a whole, which will be out probably maybe around November time because um, I need to read the last book in the series for that to go out. So I'm definitely going to be deep diving into my thoughts on all of the books in the series in that video. So you can look forward to that. Trigger warning in this one for kidnapping, uh, cyberbullying, fire, and knives. Tropes in here, it's a brother's best friend romance. The hero is also a firefighter. So there's a firefighter. Um, it's a romantic suspense. It's single dad, small town, and I would consider it a sports romance because Cadley is constantly doing sports in here doing sports that doesn't sound right <laughs> doing sports activities sporty activities wow the sun just went away if you saw that <laughs> dang my apartment does not get the best lighting i kind of like live in a, like a little cubby like my window is inside of a cubby kind of i can't describe it um the building is kind of like a square and my my windows on the inside of the square like the square is hollowed out on the side of the apartment complex my windows on the inside and so we never get direct sunlight and so there goes the sun so i apologize this looks like i'm filming at like 8 p.m but i'm not it's two o'clock in the afternoon anyway um i really enjoyed this book and i ended up giving it four stars also sorry if you hear any like squeaking like this the chair that I'm sitting in loves to squeak, so. I ended up reading 10 Trends to Seduce Your Best Friend by Penny Reed. I have a video I'm currently working on where I read romance books that have celiac disease representation in them, which if you do not know, hi, I'm Avery. I have celiac disease, which is an autoimmune disorder where your body is not able to ingest gluten. So I'm on a gluten-free diet for the rest of my life. And I've been diagnosed since I was seven, so I am very in the know of celiac disease and what it's like to live with it and so i thought it would be interesting to read romance books that have that representation in them so i'm not gonna be going into my thoughts on this this is definitely um a book you should tune in to learn about uh when that video does come out yeah it was a it was a doozy for me definitely a doozy and so you're gonna learn more about it in that vlog whenever it comes out. I decided to pick up a few like Halloween-y novellas because it's October obviously. So first I found Riding the Headless Horseman by Molly Likovich. Le um, I saw this on my Read Spice on Instagram. I love her. Um, I saw this on her Instagram and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick that up. Yes. So this is just a very short Halloween novella um, about a witch being taken by the Headless Horseman <laughs> and then like falling in love. And that's about it. It like takes place during this time, but it 
like the heroine has like these old witchy vibes to her and they live in um sleepy hollow during halloween time there wasn't much to this honestly it's not my favorite monster romance i gave it three stars it was like okay like nothing very special special about it in my opinion but this cover is stunning and it gave great Halloween vibes. Next I read Caspar by Ruby Dixon. This is book two in her Corsair Brothers series. This is the second book in that series. This is a series you definitely need to read in order because they go off of one another. So the couples are like different in each book. However, like they, they bounce off of each other. Like there's ramifications for each book. So you have to start with book one to figure out how the characters started out in book two. So. When you read book one, you figure out why Alice and Caspar, this alien and this human woman, are stuck in an escape pod together for weeks. <laughs> and so they're just floating through space in this escape pod. And um, you figure out why, obviously, when you read the previous book. If you didn't know, this series is about uh, three brothers who are Corsairs, which are space alien pirates. And um, they want to find this specific ship that has been lost. They find this ship and find human women on it. And the rest kind of goes from there. That's how Adirion, the first book, Adiron, Adiron, it's Adiron, right? Dang, I'm, I'm horrible with pronouncing Ruby's character's name sometimes. But this one specifically is about Alice and Caspar. Their space pod ends up crashing on this planet and they have to survive on this planet together. I absolutely adore survival romances, specifically alien survival romances. Give me a contemporary one all day. I love that too. But I have such a heart for survival alien romances where they have to just survive on this alien planet together and they don't know anything about it and they're working together to survive. This was so sweet. I just love how much Caspar freaking loved Alice and how Alice's heart and walls kind of like just fell away brick by brick, you know? We're going in here for attempted essay, kidnapping and killing tropes, alien romance. It's a book with a pet. There's this alien pet creature and yeah, she's so sweet, I love her. And there is forced proximity. They're stuck in this space spot together for weeks. It's on Kindle Unlimited and it is a survival romance. I love this one. I gave it five stars. It was so good. But again, read book one before you get to this one. That one is also fantastic too. I gave that one five stars as well. Next is a book I read physically and with an audio, um, but I left my physical book at my parents' house. So I don't have it on me, but this is Demystifying Disability, What to Know, What to Say, and How to Be a, an Ally by Emily Ladell. I was very kindly gifted this by a subscriber of mine. You know who you are, so thank you so much. And I saw that the audiobook was on my library and I was like, amazing, perfect. I will just pick this up and it was less than five hours. This is definitely an important read. It's a nonfiction, um, definitely geared towards those who are not in the disabled community. Basically what the title says, it helps people become better allies for the disabled community. And there were even some things I learned about being someone in the community myself. Like even if you are a part of a community, you do not know everything and anything about it and you still have things to learn about. And so I definitely learned some things while reading this book, but it is definitely geared towards those who are not in the community. Like it gives tips and tricks and things to say and what not to say, what to do, what not to do. And so I personally think that this is a book that everyone should read because it just gives a lot of insight for the like largest minority group in the entire world. Personally, when I hear about people talking about marginalized groups, often the disabled community gets left out of said discussion because um, it's not something that a lot of people think about first and foremost. And so um, this is definitely a book that will cause a lot more discussion and hopefully a lot of more um, advocacy. I just feel like this is a book that everyone should pick up to learn and to grow and to be a better person. And then also as someone currently studying to become a teacher, um, this is a great book specifically for educators to read, to just learn about the disabled community as a whole, but also how to help and interact and be a better teacher for those who are in that community. Anyway, that's my two cents on this and I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars because I think it was great and Emily Ladau is so good. She narrates the book herself and it was wonderful. I really recommend it. I next read a novella. This is Clockwork by Cassie Mint, a part of her Winter Warmer series. These are all independent novellas. They do not correlate whatsoever. They just have like a common theme of taking place during winter time. So this one is about uh, Killian and Piper. Killian is this very world-renowned clockmaker and Piper becomes his new apprentice. And he like can't stop thinking about Piper and she can't stop thinking about him. But Piper is ten, over 10 years younger than him and that is his 
best friend's little sister. So there's a lot of forbiddenness happening here. And so obviously the dam breaks and they reveal their feelings, all that jazz, um, but it's very forbidden between the two. So there's that other little element in there. I love forbidden romances. This was definitely a fun one for me. It's not my favorite casting mitt, but it was really fun. And I thought it was great um, for tropes in here. Um, there's an age gap. It's Brother's Best Friend. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It's like a workplace romance because they work together and it's a novella. Um, so I ended up giving this one four to five stars. So in October, I realized, huh, I have a video that I have to post at the end of the year, my five star prediction video. I made a like 11, there's 11 books that I talked about at the beginning of 2022 in a video, my five star predictions. And I was gonna vlog every single book and post that vlog at the end of the year for every book that I talked about. I was like, I've read three books out of the 11 and it's October, I need to get on this. <laughs> so I decided to pick one of them up. Um, this is Gaslight Hades by Grace Draven, the first book in her Bone Keeper Chronicles. I just saw Grace Draven and was like, put on this list because she is one of my favorite authors of all time. And I'm not going to be talking about this book in this video because I'm going to save it for that vlog, but I'll give a general gist. This is like a steampunk, my first steampunk, steampunk romance. And um, it's about Nathaniel and oh, what's her name? Lenore, Lenore, Nathaniel and Lenore. And they were together very much in love, but then uh, Nathaniel ended up dying. And Lenore doesn't know that Nathaniel has come back to life in the form of a bone keeper, which is like kind of like what the hero looks like on the cover. He like protects this graveyard where her dad has recently been buried and they come across each other again. And Lenore does not recognize Nathaniel at all because he's been put, his soul has been put into a different body. And so she doesn't know that this is Nathaniel. And anyway, there's like a connection there and she doesn't know why because she is in love with Nathaniel even though he's dead. And like, she does not want to love any other man. So she's super confused. And Nathaniel has to grasp with like whether or not he wants to tell this woman that this is who he is, but he died and he's not really human anymore and, and all this other stuff, obviously. So um, I'm gonna leave it at that. That's the summary for that one. And you can look forward to that video towards the end of the year. After I read that, there was a novella that I just want to mention really quick that takes place after it. It's like uh, number 1.5 in that series. This is Okali and Three Vexed, Vexed Ghosts. Sorry, that's a tongue twister for me. Um, but this is just like literally 10 pages, like a Christmas novella that takes place after the book I just talked about. And it was like on Grace Sherman's Facebook page. And yeah, I gave this three stars because I love Grace Sherman and I love her writing, but this was nothing special whatsoever. I picked up another Cassie Mint. This is another book in that same Winter Warmer series. This is The Gift which is a book Rachel from Rachel Reason Sings just loves and she's been recommending it to me and I was like I'll do it I'll finally read it and I'm so glad I did I really enjoyed it so this is about Elizabeth and Alexi um so Elizabeth is a mail carrier in this very small snowy island and on this island there's a bunch of researchers that are here to do certain things like that was never described like what they were researching um which kind of peeped me because I'm the type of person who wants to know that stuff <laughs> like I want to know what you're teaching about. I want to know what you're studying. I want to know what project you're doing. You know, like I want more details besides just being vague. Anyway, she is um, basically really into like the Island Grump, who is one of the scientists staying there. And it's Alexi. He's a very renowned scientist and he just so happens to have a reciprocating crush reciprocating crush on uh, Elizabeth. And so this takes place during like a gift exchange and Alexia has never really been given a gift during this gift exchange. And she takes it upon herself to present him with his first gift during the season, which may or may not be herself. <laughs> this is super hot, super atmospheric. I will say these like winter warmer books are great to read probably during the winter time if you love atmospheric wintry reads they definitely put you in that vibe i definitely need that vibe in like 90 degree heat here in texas so i was loving that but also very sad because that was not what it was like on the outside i'm also just a sucker for mutual pining and romances and this was definitely in here so i really enjoyed this one i gave it four stars for tropes you have a character with glasses alexei uh, wears glasses. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There is Longing. It's a novella and it is definitely a winter read. I next read uh, Hidden Waters by Katherine Cowles. This is book three in the Tattered and Torn series. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to get m more into this book in my dedicated vlog or breakdown, more of a breakdown video that's going to come out um, in like a month. So stay tuned for that. But this is the romance between Addie and Beckett. You've met both of these characters in the previous books in the series. So I really recommend reading them in order. You don't have to, 
but I really recommend it because it just makes the book even better that you've read about these characters before because you've read about Addie and her past. She comes from a very abusive household and um, she's finally living on her own and by some means she ends up having Beckett a friend's brother as her roommate and they have to stay in this house together and they become close friends and they're roommates and then it grows into something more. I adored this book. It's probably my favorite so far in the series. I really just really related to Addie in a lot of ways and Beckett was just super gentle and super passionate and kind at the same time and I just love how caring and understanding he was for Addie. So I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't wanna go too much into it because I'm gonna be doing a breakdown. And then for trigger warnings, you have kidnapping, physical abuse, death, and murder. For Tropes in here, there is a heroine who has a damaged past. Um, we have a doctor hero. It's forced proximity because they're roommates, a roommate romance. And it is small town and there is definitely a sweet hero in here. I use book five out of five stars. Next is a doozy, okay. <laughs> I buddy read a, a book with Caitlin from the Love Library and I love her so much and I think she like reposted some fan art of this series and I was like you know what Caitlin I haven't read that series yet I've been wanting to for so long because it's a monster romance and people just love this series and I need to get on the train and so we were like let's buddy read it let's do it and so we decided to pick up The Lady and the Orc by uh Finley Fenn and I thoroughly thought that I would love this series because so many of my mutuals on Instagram like rave about it and how much they love this monster romance series. And if you don't know, I'm a, I'm a monster romance lover. I love monster romance. This was not it for me, specifically because of the two freaking characters. I despised them. I'm proud of Caitlyn because Caitlyn didn't finish it because she just didn't like it. After a certain point, she was like, I'm not finishing it because I was telling her how it does not get any better. Because I read it in like a day or two because I wanted to know what happened at the end of this freaking train wreck. <laughs> this is basically an orc romance where this girl is married. She's married and um, her husband is like this bad dude, okay? He's a human dude, he's not great. And there was these orcs in this land that are hurting humans and kidnapping them and taking them, whatever. The heroine gets taken by orcs and the general, the leader of these orcs is like, you're gonna be mine, blah, blah, blah. It's basically a power dynamic between the two of them just like goes way out of freaking control because there's like secrets he's lying all the time like oh, i don't i don't want to spoil it but also like i wish i could rant about it specifically caitlin and i talked about this book for so long like we're just ranting about it and i just at a point i was like do you want me to spoil it for you because like i want to rant about it so bad she's like yes yeah, spoil it because i'm not going to finish it and so we're probably going to read the other books in the series because i heard like it gets better after book one but I don't, I don't know. Like, tell me what y'all think. Anyway, so many of my friends freaking love this series. So after reading it, I was like, what the heck y'all? Like this book was bad to me, like not great. And so after reading this, I realized book one is not a fan favorite. So I'm like, okay. But then I've had friends telling me like, it doesn't really get any better. Like, what do I do? <laughs> the hero in this book is one of the worst monster heroes I've ever read. I think one of the reasons why I love monster romances so much is because a lot of the time, these monstrous, grotesque, kind of ugly on the outside monsters, like, they're total softy sweeties cinnamon rolls on the inside and I freaking love that I love it because that's the kind of hero I want in real life and I love and adore is the sweet caring passionate one and so they can be fun in other aspects and like a little naughty in other aspects but at the end of the day I want a sweet caring man um or monster in this case and this guy was just so crappy he made the heroine feel like crap the entire book he gaslit her constantly he lied to her all the time i was like why is this girl into him why does she like him they were fighting constantly there was dubious consent here he assaulted her like multiple times in here i have no clue how they fell in love no clue whatsoever didn't believe it and so yeah that's about it i gave those two stars and i think i'm being generous okay uh <laughs> trigger warning here for kidnapping death blood dubious consent and threats to kill like a baby like she is like months pregnant and someone threatens and almost tries to kill the baby in her stomach so be aware of that i picked up another halloween-esque romance so jack 2 came out by lila Fay. and if you don't follow my instagram <laughs> you wouldn't know this but lila Fay was so sweet she commented on one of my like rec videos i think it was like my monster romance rec video or something along those lines and she was so sweet and was like just by the way i'm going to be naming my next heroine after you and i was like what okay thank 
you. That sounds amazing. You do not have to do that. And so I picked this one up. Number one, because I love her monster romances. They're just so hilariously funny and just like so iconic. I think they're iconic and funny. So I picked them up. And yeah, the heroine's name in here is Ava. So I'm honored. <laughs> if you've read Jack, the first one, there's Jack and this is Jack too. So in Jack, the Jack hero in that one and the heroine, um, they have a Jack baby. And so this is Jack baby all grown up and him finding his woman and getting with his woman. It's kind of like a second chance deal. She found out that Jack is actually this jack-o'-lantern creature. Like he was had his human facade on. They were in a relationship for a while. He like reveals to her who he actually is. She freaks out, dumps him, hasn't seen each other in a year, even though she's thought about him for forever. Just like the, the pumpkin head thing freaked her out, which would freak out anybody. But um, so Jack, Jack number two, little baby Jack, who's grown up now, has decided to go get the woman, his woman back. This series is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> If you want to just laugh during your romance, then <laughs> just pick this up because it's absolutely ridiculous. But it's so fun. Like I have so much fun reading these and just like Lila Faye in general. It's just like so funny. I love her. So like there wasn't much to this. I gave it three stars because like it's not like a full-blown masterpiece, you know, like <laughs> it's just like a fun good old time. And so yeah, I had fun reading this and thank you Lila Faye for <laughs> naming her Ava. I thought that was really funny, but it was also really weird. <laughs> having like this <laughs> pumpkin creature dude mode my name in this book all the time and like commanding Ava to do stuff. And I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> the last book that I ended up reading during the first half of October is Shattered Sea by Katherine Cowles, which is a book that I'm about to discuss with Brie in a few hours. I don't really wanna give my review or write a review on this until I have this discussion with Brie because I have a thought of what I want to read this right now, but I feel like it might change after talking to her. So I don't really want to go too deep into my thoughts on this because I don't feel like I fully grasp it. I love this book. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I'm just saying like I have thoughts about it and I really want to talk to Brie about it before I write my review and like put an actual like star rating online. This is the romance between Lakin and Bowden. You've met Lakin in the previous book in the series and Bowden is a new character. He's actually like a actor who is trying to get away from the limelight and get some research done for a movie he really wants to do. And he decides to do said research in this small town of Wolf Gap that you've read about takes place in this entire series. And there he ends up having it to Lakin who owns or runs is the manager of this art gallery in town and he's very interested in one of her art pieces. And the rest kind of goes from there. The two of them are kind of inseparable after that point. Lakin and Bowden have gone through a lot of things in their past and um, Lakin is a survivor of a car crash and she has experienced some chronic pain as a result of it. And so um, I really related to her when it came to the chronic pain aspect in here. I've highlighted a few things, maybe I'll, I'll share something in here. One quote that I really liked is her and Bowden talking and she has been I think like sitting in the wrong type of chair for a while if I'm not mistaken and it has been hurting her back when she gets up and he's like well, why didn't you say anything why didn't you why don't we, we we could go somewhere else and then she responds by saying sometimes I don't want everyone around me to have to make concessions because my body can't keep up like the rest of yours. I really related to that part because if you didn't know I, I deal with a lot of similar issues as Lagan as a result of my chronic illness and I have to walk around with a mobility aid and I can't stand for long periods of time and so I have felt that almost on a daily basis and so Lagan was very relatable to me. I really loved her as a character. I think the part that isn't my favorite thing ever is the suspense part in here. Suspense romances aren't really my thing. They're not and so I love the romance part in here. It's the suspense that I'm like I wish it was more on the wayside because I feel like the suspense in this one specifically was more 50-50 romance suspense, 50% romance, 50% suspense, you know? And with, I feel like book three that I just read, it was way more heavy on the romance aspect, which is why I loved it, gave it five stars. And so I'm either thinking for this book, either a 4.5 or five. I don't know yet. Like, cause like I loved it. I did. I just like, again, the suspense part wasn't my favorite. And I'm the person who truly believes for myself and my rating, like five star is favorite of all time. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing I didn't like. And like books that I full heartedly loved every single solitary word of, you know? Um, so I'm going to sit on this cause I love this book. Don't get me wrong. I just am not the biggest fan of suspense romances or just suspenseful parts in romances. So I have to just sit on it and then talk to Brie, which I'm very excited to uh, do. And so you can go check that out. I'm gonna link it down below for you so you can go check it out right now. And like, I guess in real time, after you watch this video, you can go watch uh, that live show to figure out what I thought about it. 
in real time with Brie. That is the end of today's video. Thank y'all so, so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any car emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.